Hello and welcome to another Photoshop video. Firstly, apologies for not posting a photography related video for some time now. I've been incredibly busy with other stuff um, that I'm not going not gonna to bore you with now. So let's crack on to this Photoshop video and today we're going to look at how to sharpen your photographs. And um, we're not going to have a look at a broad view, we're going to look at one specific tool that I personally like using again and again and again and it's what I use when sharpening all my photographs. So the technique is called a high pass filter. Now some of you might not have heard of it because it's not actually in the sharpen menu where you'll find stuff like smart sharpen and unsharp mask, it's not actually in that menu. It's actually right at the bottom. Um, we're going to have a look at how it works in Photoshop later but um, that's what I just thought I'd give you a show of what it actually does. So I've got some photographs over here. Now I'm going to show you the original photographs first and then what happened when we put a high pass filter on top of it. Now the colours and saturation have also been changed as well so let's ignore that, we're just going to focus on the sharpness of the image. <coughs> so I need to first take a look at the symbols here and the belt as well that she's wearing. Now the symbol in the background here isn't really that crisp and you know there's not nothing really going on for this image at the moment. Then when we apply a high pass filter, you notice that the symbol, the symbol is really um, starting to stand out. You know that edge is really starting to um, pop out now. And the same with the guitar as well. You know, the edges again are a lot sharper. And with the belt, we've got a lot more detail in the belt now as well. So what the high pass filter actually does is that rather than just apply it to the whole image, which is what unsharp mask and smart sharpen might do, and you'll have to fiddle around with them. High pass filter, um, it only really affects the edges, and those are the bits that we really want to sharpen. So it's quite clever, very intelligent, and it only affects the edges. So look at one more photo. <coughs> now again, we can see we've already got quite a lot of detail in the belt here, um, but again, we can just bring that out even more with the high pass filter, and also you know things like the hairs and the eyes really pop as well when you put this filter on. So obviously here the eye is quite, not quite as sharp as we might like it. There's a nice glint in it though, which is always good. But it's not quite sharp, but the high pass filter just brings it out. So that's the high pass filter, and that's what it can do. So it affects edges, and it's really, really, really simple and easy to use. You can put one on in, well, I'm going to show you how quickly you can do it. You can put one in, in less than a minute, you know, without talking, obviously. So let's have a look at the photo we're going to be using today. That would be this fella. This is a photo I took in in China. Let's just bring it out. So here yeah, we've obviously got um, the boy being the centre of the photo. You know, and this is a praying ceremony. So we'd really like the. Um, incense sticks to pop out and again obviously that's an edge so high pass filter would be really good. We've obviously got a lot of detail here in the hair and it'd be really nice to make that stand out as well. So this is the photo we're going to whack into Photoshop. Let me just bring this back so we can drag it in. Where's my menu gone? There it is. It's all going wrong. Well, I think this is the first video tutorial I've made in my new operating system. So <laughs> bear with me if things go a bit funny. Alright, let's bring this up. So we can obviously play around with levels and stuff and blah 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 before that. Obviously the histogram needs bringing in slightly, but we're not going to bother with any of that today. We're just going to look at the um, at the high pass filter. So we won't be needing this too much. So this is the auto. Let's bring it in the middle. So, if you're going to sharpen an image normally, you'd go to filter, filter, sharpen, and there we go, you've got sharpen edges, sharpen a bit more, smart sharpen and sharp mask and all that stuff. Uh, these are still things I don't use very often because I sometimes think the tools are over complicated and they don't really give you the results that I'm personally after. And so I um, found this great little technique and I'd like to share it with you called high pass filter. There it is, if you go to filter, other, other, then high pass. So if you go to filter other than high pass, and um, that's where the filter is, but first, something we've got to do very important, <coughs> we're not actually going to apply the filter to this background layer. 
we're going to create another filter on top because we need to use the um, channel um, adjustments, the um, blending mode, that's what it's called, um, So to get the filter to work. So first off we're going to duplicate the layer. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it High Pass Filter Demo because some people thought calling it Arlene wasn't really serious enough. <laughs> so that's High Pass Filter Demo. I'm um, going to change this to Overlay, which is down here. And you notice that immediately we get a bit more contrast, which, if you're going to go for black and white, might be nice. But um, this is just a temporary thing. It's not going to stay around forever. So let's now whack on our High Pass Filter. And you'll see that all you get is a little uh, preview. What's going to happen? Let's focus on the hair here. So that's looking nice. Now, the um, radius you're going to want to be using, see what I mean by uh, the sticks? The um, radius you want to be using is entirely dependent on the pixel dimensions <coughs> of your photo. So you've got a small photo, obviously you don't want to whack out a 6 radius, 6 pixel radius, because that will just completely blow it off and completely sharpen it way too much and it won't look natural. Um, so you want to look for a radius between maybe 1 and 2. Start off 5 is normally a good place to start off with. Now you'll know when you're going a bit over the top because you'll start to get a little halo effect around uh, the edge of your image, which we're starting to get a little bit, so 5 might be still be a little bit too much. I don't normally tend to go anywhere between 3 and 6, depending on what kind of effect I'm after. Sometimes I'm, if I'm going to desaturate the image a little bit, I'm going to put out a lot of sharpness in there. Um, but sometimes it's just not necessary to. And obviously because it's on a uh, independent layer, you're not actually affecting the background image at all. So you can delete it and redo this and fine-tune it as many times as you want, or just undo it and apply it again. So that's uh, very easy to do. So I'm going to go for a pixel radius of five and a half, just as a guess, let's just type in because the slide is being a bit rubbish. So you see we've got a bit of halo effect, but it's you know looking really nice in there. So let's press OK on that and something amazing will happen, we hope. So we've now sharpened the image and um, I'm going to hide that. So if you watch the back pocket trousers and the hair here, just they jump out a little bit. I'm going to take off the high pass filter and just do something really drastic just to show you what it can do. So there you go. Ridiculously sharp. Let's just apply that. You know. The good thing is it also adds a bit of contrast to the image as well, which is always nice. Now, if you want to fine tune this a little bit, without going undo and reapplying a filter, we can use our blending mode options here as well, which is always useful. So, if um, you want to increase the uh, the level of sharpness, say you haven't put in enough, you can just change this down to hard light and I'll add in even more sharpness and also gives you a little bit more contrast as well. If you want to decrease, so you've overdone a little bit, if you want to decrease you can always pull it down to soft light and I'll just bring it back down slightly. And of course you can always uh, reduce the opacity down here as well, which you can always take it down a little bit as well. And that's really all there is to it, so play around, um, have a go, play with the radius and see what works best for you. Now, of course, um, we are hoping, well, I'm hoping, let me just come up big, don't save that. So, um, I'm still going to hopefully start to bring you more videos again and again as soon as I work out what to make them on. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave um, a question on YouTube or email me directly at joshlewisphotog at gmail.com. That account is part of the Google Plus network. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook, and I'll put a little box up somewhere with the links for those.
you can probably also find the links down in the description as well, possibly, if I put them there. And if you really like this video and you like Photoshop and you like to learn more and try new things out, just don't forget to hit that subscribe button up above. So thank you very much for watching. This was a high-pass tool. tool. And um, we'll see you again next time.